Hello everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions, where we talk all things media. So it's Tuesday, which means it's time for another Inherited Movie Collection unboxing video. And today we are looking at box number eight. And this one... Like, it feels like a big one. It is really heavy. And so, I just, there has to be more movies in this than we've seen in the past. And so, I am excited to see what's in here. This is another one where the, uh, like, it's a closed box. And so, I have no clue what's in here. But really excited to dive into it and see just what in the world I get to add to my collection this week. So, uh, before we do that, though, let's take a look at our stats from last week. Our updated stats after box number seven. So, you can see last week was actually a really good box. I ended up keeping 39 of them. I didn't put any in binders. I just kept all of them in their standard cases. And then 26 of them were ones that I am donating slash selling. And so 65 total, which means that 60% of the movies that I was opening last week, I actually uh, am adding to my collection, which is just awesome. That is the second best percentage of this uh, like inherited movie collection so far. So it was a really good box and lots of really interesting interesting things that I was able to add to my collection. You can see like overall, what is that? Like 47.93% is kept with 4.8% in binders. So only 47.20% I'm donating, which means that more than half of what I'm opening, I'm keeping, which is awesome. Now I have no idea what this box is going to do to those numbers, but I'm excited to find out. So if you guys are excited about this video, please give it a like down below. That really does help me out. But with that said, let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right in to box number eight of my inherited movie collection. For those curious, this is a Sam's Club box today. I think the, there's one Kohl's box over there and then a bunch of Chewy boxes left. That's what I got left. So, all right. There's just a lot of stuff here. Let's just pick up the first thing I see. So this one is a TV classic. This is Bonanza. Eight episodes over six hours. You can see there's four episodes on each of the two discs. So Bonanza is a Western television series, obviously, but it's not one I have ever seen before. Um, I know that it is a really popular one, and I want to say this had a like ridiculously long running. It was a ridiculously long running series, but... I don't really know anything about it. So this is one that I will just end up donating. It's I don't want like random episodes like you guys know me. I need to have the whole series or at least the whole season. And that's just random episodes. That's not going to do it for me. So that one will go into the donate pile, which let me get it into its right spot over here. And then we have Battalion. Okay, so this one. Wow, this is familiar. Yeah, this is definitely a dollar store find. You can see, where is it? High octane pictures there. And on the side, this is definitely dollar store material. And I really think I ended up picking this one up from the dollar store. Let me see if I can find this one real quick. It is super familiar. Like I've seen this before. How do you spell this? B-A-T-T-A. Yes, I do have this one already. So that one will go into the uh, trade pile. All right, what do we got next here? Oh, this is a thin case. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show. Okay, one of television's most beloved husband and wife teams starred in this variety show as a straight man husband and ditzy wife. So this is three classic episodes. They were broadcast from October 12, 1950 to September 22nd, 1958. That is random. I never heard of these two before. I don't know anything about this. Not anything I'm interested in. This one will go in the trade pile. Like, let me know down below if you know them. Like, is this couple, whoever, George Burns and Gracie Allen, are they worth watching those three episodes just to know who they are? Let me know down below. All right, so here we go. Oh, this is cool. Patrick Stewart. This is super disgusting, but that's all right. All right, so this is Patrick Stewart in Safe House. Hector Elizondo and Kimberly Williams. All right, this looks very interesting. It looks like it's a Showtime movie directed by Eric Steven Stahl. I do not see if it's widescreen or full screen, but given that it's from Showtime, I just feel like it's probably naturally a 1.33 to 1 aspect ratio. Patrick Stewart, oh, Kimberly Williams is from Father of the Bride. No kidding. Action packed espionage thriller where the worst enemy of thriller where the worst enemy of all is time oh okay <laughs> that was that was difficult for me to understand all right so yeah safe house i'm holding on to this because it has patrick stewart in it you know what actually i'm gonna put this in the maybe pile i want to find out more about this 
because this is just interesting. So that's a cool one. I'm going to put that in maybe for now, and then we'll look at it at the end of this video and see what else we can find. And then we have the complete mini series of Beach Girls based on the popular Luann Rice novel. This is the dude. He was in, what was he in? Was he in, remember the Titans? The OC? Something else. He's in Grey's Anatomy, I believe, also, because my wife watches that. I hate that show, but she watches that. Anyway, Beach Girls. I don't know what this is, but it has Rob Lowe in it. Julia Ormond. This one just doesn't look like anything I'll be interested in. Small Town Big Secrets is a two-disc set. I'm going to put it in the trade pile, and you guys can save it if you think it's worthwhile. It is a Lifetime movie, so... Nah! I'm going to pass on that one. Then we have... Boyntown Beach Club. I'm trying to see if I recognize any of the actors in this, and I don't. But this is a, po a lively and poignant comedy with lots of laughs. A comic celebration of love in the sunset years. Hmm. Directed by Susan Seidelman. This is... I don't know. This one just doesn't look like it's for me. Nah, I don't know. I think I'm going to pass on this one, too. Kind of a weird box so far. Very strange. I'm, I'm putting that in the trade pile. All right, what do we have here? Okay, so this looks like it, it is some anime. Lost Universe Wanted Union of Evil. But this is volume five. Man, can you guys even, can you make out that hair on there? That is awesome. Ugh. All right, anyway. Uh, with villains like they, these, it doesn't matter who your friends are. Ah, man. So, like, this looks like it's going to be random episodes in the middle of a show because it's volume five. And I I don't see any other volumes in there, at least after a quick glance. I'm going to, I even though it's anime and I've been holding on to all of those, because this seems to be, like, in the middle of the series, I'm going to put this one in the trade pile as well. Not a great box so far, but hopefully it turns around. All right, okay, and it does with this one at least. Jamie Presley in Poor White Trash. Oh my goodness, this looks fantastic. It is in widescreen, directed by Mike, written and directed by Michael Adios or Adoyas. Crime pays, just not enough. This is one really funny, absurd movie. Okay, I really like Jamie Presley, so I, this thing's falling out of it, like the security sticker falling out of it. This looks fun. I like Jamie Presley. I'm going to hold on to this one. And so far we have Slim Pickens. So I'm, I'm definitely holding on to Poor White Trash. That's going to be my first keep of the day so far. Then we have one of my favorite films of all time. Hate all you want. This movie's fantastic. This is Signs. But I do own this one on Blu-ray, of course. I just, I love this movie so much. It is one of the best, in my opinion. It is my favorite of M. Night Shyamalan. And one of just, like the most memorable few experiences I've ever had in a movie theater because I ended up seeing that one like three times, I think, in theaters. And I remember walking out and hearing the people in front of me say, did you guys hear that girl laughing? That was the only thing good about, or girl screaming. That was the only thing good about this movie. Well, that girl they were refer referring to was, was me screaming because, oh my God, some of those moments in that movie always got me. My friends never let me live that down because they thought that was hilarious. But anyway, I love Signs. I do own it. It's going in the trade pile. Next up, we have Visions of Passion. Now, this looks fun. Directed by Randall St. George. It is in full screen. But again, I just this feels like a made for like Skinamax type of film. I'm holding on to this one. Oh, I, let me rephrase. I'm going to put this in the maybe pile. And I will check out just to verify that this is in fact uh, the original aspect ratio of uh, 1.33 to 1. But yeah, this one looks like a lot of fun. So I'm going to put that in the maybe pile. And we will see where it stands at the end. Next up. Oh, I thought this was new, but it's not. This is unspeakable. Lance Henriksen and Dennis Hopper. Nothing can silence pure evil. This looks like a serial killer type film of some sort. Taught suspenseful and disturbing psychological thriller filmed in a real prison. This is interesting. Jeff Fahey is in this. Is yeah from the Lawnmower Man. Okay, if this one is widescreen, and it is, I'm gonna hold on to this one. This looks interesting. One of these MGM DVDs unspeakable i'm surprised i hadn't heard of this with dennis hopper in it but yeah i'm gonna hold on to that one that looks cool we have two now for the key pile all right and then we have the dying gall written for the screen and directed by craig lucas a powerfully haunting film 
Okay, let's see if this box can sell me on this because right now I'm not really sold. A stylish, superbly acted, and nasty piece of fun. Well, okay, that sounds interesting. Why do I not know he's a he's a playwright? Why do I not know that name, Craig Lucas? That does not ring a bell though. Grief-stricken screenwriter Robert has a has written a brilliant script inspired by his lover's recent death from AIDS. And powerful film executive Jeffrey wants to buy it for a million dollars. The catch, Robert must agree to make the love story heterosexual. Soon, Robert is seduced by Jeffrey's charms. Oh, man. Soon, a series of explosive secrets are revealed that lead all three characters into a dark maze of deception and betrayal. Do you guys know anything about this one? Like, I'm tempted to hold on to it. The subject matter sounds really interesting if they do it well, I guess. Mm, I'm torn on this one. I think I have to put it in the maybe pile and just see what the reviews are to see if it's any good or not. Peter Skarsgård, Campbell Scott. I don't know. So many of these I just never heard of. I'm putting this in the maybe. That one we're going to check to see what the reviews are. If it's like, I don't know, 6 out of 10 or above on IMDb, I'll probably hold on to it. Uh, great, great movie here. An American Werewolf in Paris. Uh, this one, yeah, okay. So this is the sequel to American Werewolf in London. So I do not have this one. And as long as it is in widescreen, and it is, I will definitely hold on to this. I have never seen this one before. I do know uh, American Werewolf in London. I always mix up the titles though, as you can, you know, as you just were able to tell. Um, but yeah, this one should be pretty interesting. That's one I've always wanted to see. So very intrigued to see how that one is. So that's going in the keep pile and then Star Trek Into Darkness. I do own this one. I have the whole like uh, whatever this reboot series is, whatever it's called. I have that on 4K so I can put that in the, the trade pile. Just make sure it's in there and it is. All right. So next up we have Conspiracy. Stanley Tucci and Kenneth Branagh. That's an excellent cast. This is not going to come off. I guarantee it. And that's disappointing because this is an awesome snapper case. Love it. Yeah, this looks really good. By winter of 1942, Hitler's dream of Aryan supremacy had become a nightmare. Yeah, I'm definitely going to hold on to this one as long as it is widescreen and it is 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I will hold on to this. I really hope I can get this sticker off, but like I just on these uh, cases like this. Yeah, that's not coming off easily, so I'll have to work on that. But yeah, I might not be able to get that sticker off, unfortunately, but it is what it is. If it stays on there, it stays on there. All right, next up, we have Daniel Craig in Defiance, based on the incredible true story. So this is a familiar movie to me. I don't believe I own this, but um, I do remember when this one came out. I remember, I think this was a block, like when I was working at Family Video, or I guess it was just before Family Video. But um, yeah, this one, I do remember being in like our two for one section at Family Video. So yeah, uh, do I want this one though? Like, I like the cast on this because you have Daniel Craig, obviously, and then you have Liv Schreiber, uh, Liv Schreiber as well. Uh, I just don't know if this is one I really want or not. I think I'm going to put this one in the trade pile. And if you guys think I should watch this, let me know. But in the meantime, I'm putting it in the trade pile. And then we have Mario Puzo's The Last Don, the complete miniseries. This is pretty cool. I have never seen this before. Mario Puzo, obviously the writer of The Godfather. So I don't know if this has anything to do with The Godfather or if this is like a separate story altogether. And it doesn't really say anything on the back. So you know what? I'm holding on to this one for sure. It is, uh, you know, 1.33 to 1 aspect ratio. At least I thought I saw. Yeah, full full length. Oh, no. Full length broadcast. Whatever. I'm sure this one is a, uh, originally in full screen, so I'm going to hold on to this one. Definitely have to replace the case on that, though, with one of these ones I'm trading. But yeah, very cool. Know nothing about this one, but excited to have another mini series in the collection. All right, so we are one quarter of the way through, it looks like now. So next up, we have Ex Machina. This one is one that I have been meaning to watch forever. I actually own it either on Blu-ray or 4K. I think I upgraded to 4K, though, because it was so cheap. But uh, because I do own it, I will put that in the trade pile. Then we have Augustus with Peter O'Toole and Charlotte Rampling. As the Empire kneeled in defeat, one man stood in triumph. So this looks interesting. I, I like... Every once in a while, I get it in me that, like, I should watch more movies of this, like, style, this, like, sword and sorcery style. I don't know what you call it, but, like, from this era. And, uh, yeah, I just, this looks interesting. Like, I get it in my head sometimes that 
I want to watch a movie like that, but I don't have a ton in my collection. So I'm going to put this in the maybe pile only because it is full screen and I need to see if that is the original aspect ratio or uh, what the deal is there, but you can see it is in full screen. So going in the maybe pile, but looks like a cool one. If it is the correct aspect ratio, I will hold on to that. Um, and then next up, we have Maps to the Stars. This is another one that you could find at um, Dollar Tree. I don't believe I picked it up, though, but you do. it actually has now the Batman in it. Robert Pattinson is in this. Uh, Julianne Moore, John Cusack, obviously in that as well. So if I don't have this one, I'm holding on to it. But let me check if I have this one or not. So I do not own this one. I didn't even realize this is a Cronenberg film. So that's really cool. Another Cronenberg film for the collection. I'm holding on to this. But before I move forward, this just hit me. Ex Machina is from the writer of 28 Days Later in Dread. Like, those are two movies that if I ever did like a top, let me say top 75, top 100 films, like of my favorite films, both of those movies would likely be in that top 100 with like, I, maybe even higher than that. Like I love both those movies. I need to watch Ex Machina while I'm on vacation. Cause right now I'm in like my Christmas vacation or whatever, my holiday break. And so I need to watch that like ASAP. I did not know it was written by those people, but, or, or it was from the same person who did those. But anyway, uh, next up we have 1000 days in space. Okay. So this absolutely looks like low budget dollar store stuff, but like, it's space and I just love space movies and it looks like it could be a space thriller. So ah, I got to hold on to it. It's probably not going to be the best, but like, I just love the idea. I love that idea. So I'm, I'm sticking with that one. Oh, here, I'm going to show these two at the same time. So we have Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and then Star Wars, The Force Awakens. I do own both of these. So I have the, uh, whatchamacallit, the big the Skywalker saga, is that what it's called? Yeah, on 4K. And then I just own this one separately because this one was not included. This one in Solo were not included in the Skywalker saga for whatever reason. Um, but I do own both of those, so I will get rid of those. And then In Dubious Battle with James Franco. I believe this was, uh, who? yeah, Steinbeck novel. Um, I did find this one on Blu-ray, I believe, from the Dollar Tree. So I will uh, get rid of that one. And then we have Mean Dreams. The law won't protect you. Is that Bill Paxton? Oh my gosh. I think it is. There's a sticker on it. But yeah, Bill Paxton. Barely even looks like him. Like, that's awesome. So I don't know anything about this, but Bill Paxton's in it. So I'm holding on to it just because he is one of the greats. R.I.P. Bill Paxton holding on to Mean Dreams. And then we have Sugar Mountain. Truth Gets Lost. Carrie Elwes is in this? <laughs> just some like random actor. But that's what a lot of these like low budget films do. Jason Momoa? What? Aquaman is in this? Okay. Good enough for me. Holding on to it. And it is 2.35 to 1 anamorphic widescreen. I don't know anything about this one either, but Aquaman is in this and Carrie Elwes. is like, yes, I'm holding on to that. That's really cool. All right. And then we have Edge of Winter, Tom Holland and Joel Kinnaman. Nothing is more dangerous than a father's love. In the dead of winter, uh, in the dead of winter, anyone can be pushed to the edge. Oh man, Tom Holland is in this and it looks like, yes, quite a young Tom Holland as he's in the background there. What is this about? It's got a fake case to it, like fake cover art to it. Mm, man, even though it does have Tom Holland, because it has the fake cover art, I think I'm going to end up just trading this one away. Looks like more dollar store stuff, so I'm going to put that one aside. Oh, and then we have Badass. This is awesome. So, uh, yes, if I don't have this one, I'm going to hold on to this. I might have this in a set already, uh, but this is Mario Van Peebles and uh, just like black exploitation at its finest from everything I've always heard from it. Um, this is widescreen. So I need to see if I have this one already or not. Nope, I do not. So awesome. Definitely holding on to Badass, the special edition DVD. That's awesome. Another dollar store one here that I'm fairly certain I already have. Man, do I? Hangar 10. 33 years after the infamous Rendlesham Forest UFO incident. Okay, let me, I gotta see. I don't know if I have it, but like, take a look at the back while I'm looking this up because this looks really good. But again, I just feel like I already have it and I don't. So I just must recognize the cover for some reason. So, yep, holding on to Hangar 10. Hopefully that'll be cool. I love aliens. I love space. Okay, so we have a bunch of thin case ones here. So most of these will likely be getting rid of. The Phantom of the Opera with Lon Chaney. Code 7, Victim 5. I have no idea what that is. Take a look at the back there. 
Don't know that. And then we have, what is this? Oh, Robert Mitchum in Lee Majors and Agency. Provocative thriller set in the high pressure, pressure world of Madison Avenue advertising. Man, it's Robert Mitchum, though. So I know Robert Mitchum now, thanks to Night of the Hunter. Oh my God, he is brilliant. Ah, still gonna, I'm not gonna hold on to these. Um, we have Cry of the Black Wolves and Desert Commando, Abraxas, and Assassin. Abraxas, I swear that's on some other big set I picked up during this. That's very familiar. Oh, it is Jesse Ventura. That's why it's familiar. Just a different cover, but that's the one with Jesse Ventura. So I did hold on to that one already. Cell Block Girls and uh, Cockfighter, which I already had that one in there. So the only ones I'm like curious in are Agency and Phantom of the Opera, because I don't believe my uh, Universal Monster set came with that one. So I'm gonna hold on to those. So I'm gonna put those two in the maybe pile, and then everything else is going in the uh, trade pile. So we'll move on from those. And again, I'll let you know about these at the end if I'm going to binder those or just get rid of them. Moving right along, we have Live, Die, Repeat or Edge of Tomorrow. This movie I actually saw with my good buddy in theaters and I loved it then. Uh, recently, I guess it was, was it this year or last year? I guess it was this year because this was when I began my manga uh, obsession or just my love for manga. And uh, I read the uh, manga that was uh, this movie is based off of and it was really good. I do prefer the film though, to be honest with you, uh, but just an awesome sci-fi movie that's like Groundhog's Day in a sci-fi action world. It's, it's awesome. Uh, and next up we have the cook. He's the cook. They're the dinner sorority babes, the other white meat. Okay. Well, yes, I'm holding on to this because this looks bonkers. Oh my goodness. It has the slip cover and everything. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Holding on to the cook. That just looks so much fun. All right. Next up is Happy Hour, a love story straight up with a twist by Mike Bensavenga. I'm butchering that, I'm sure. I don't recognize many of these people in this. It is four by three letterboxed. I am going to donate that one or you know trade that one, whatever the case is. And then we have the Brothers Grimm, Matt Damon and Heath Ledger. This one feels kind of light. Nope, it's in there. If this is in widescreen, I will be holding on to it, and it is. So this is cool because I've wanted to see this movie for a long time, but never owned it. So I will now give the Brothers Grimm, uh, you know, a shot at some point. So that one is going into the collection. So we are officially halfway done. So I'm going to pause for a second, take a drink. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Another box set. This is Caught on Tape, Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. Look at the side. Like, what? Who is the audience? Like, you have a little boy and a little girl kissing. Uh, you have, like, somebody pouring food on a bikini-clad woman. You have some nudity on the back, like, blurred out, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't be showing it. Like, I, I don't know who the audience is for this. But this is, like, I, I don't need this. This is obviously something I can <laughs> donate slash trade away. I don't know. We have, you know, the internet now. I just, what do we need caught on tape DVDs for anymore? We just, we don't. That's what TikTok's for. That's what Instagram's for, right? YouTube. Anyway, uh, next up here, we have Father of the Bride. Now, this is a fantastic film that I don't believe I own already with Steve Martin. I hope he has the sequel in this is somewhere as well because I really like these movies. So I'm going to hold on to Father of the Bride, assuming that it is not in full screen. I think I saw widescreen. Yeah, widescreen right there. So holding on to that one. And then next up we have Michael J. Fox and Sean P a Brian De Palma film. I don't know this one at all. Casualties of War. And it's in widescreen. So my initial thought was, oh, it's a goofy looking war film and getting rid of it. Then like Michael J. Fox, Sean Penn, a Brian De Palma film. Um, yes, this is awesome. I don't know this one. And so I am very excited to see. I didn't show you guys. I am very excited to see what this one is all about. Michael J. Fox in a war movie. I didn't even know that existed. What year is this? 2001. That is a really cool find or a really cool ad because I didn't know that one existed. So very excited about that one. And then we have The Piano with uh, Holly Hunter, Harvey Keitel, and Sam Neill, a Jane Campion film. Hmm. One of the most critically acclaimed and highly awarded films of the year. So I know I'd heard of this one before, but I don't know if it's one I'm very interested in watching. So I think I'm going to go ahead and trade this one away. 
Again, let me know if it's one I'm wrong about. Let me know down in the comments. Next up is uh, Minority Report from with Tom Cruise. I do have a full like Tom Cruise collection on Blu-ray that does have this one in it. So I will trade that away and it's full screen. So don't need that one anyway. Oh my God. Yes, this is awesome. So Rob Van Dam's Rob Van Dam. Oh my gosh. There's my wrestling mark coming out, but Jean-Claude Van Dam's hard target. So this one was actually just released on 4k by Kino. Maybe I think it was Kino Lorber did it, but this is one I have been looking for for a while because I actually found hard target two at the dollar tree. Like, I don't know, sometime earlier this year or late last year, and I'd never seen the first one. And so I've been trying to find it and now I have it. And I'm so excited. This is awesome. I could have just gotten the 4K, but I mean, yeah, this is the way to go until I watch it and see if I like it or not. So that's probably my favorite find so far in this weird box. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is a really good one too. Ralph Fiennes, Angela Bassett, Juliette Lewis, Strange Days. So this one is interesting because I was looking up like either apocalyptic films uh, recently. And this was one that was on there that I'd never heard of before. And uh, this one just looks really interesting. New Year's Eve, 1999. Anything is possible. Nothing is forbidden. I think it's dealing with like the Y2K crisis. Uh, but I don't remember exactly what happens in this. I didn't see it, but I know about it. Um, but yeah, this one just looks awesome. Like I am so excited. And it's a widescreen aspect ratio. Very excited for this. Cannot wait to watch this one. This is another one I don't believe is available even on Blu-ray. So awesome. Two really good ones back to back. Let's see if we can do three in a row here. Oh, okay. This is cool. Not quite on the same level, but very cool for a different reason. This is Killer Rats. And I don't see the film has been modified from its original version. Ah, oh, bummer. That's disappointing. So yeah, this one is going to be in full screen and it was obviously not originally in full screen. So that's disappointing because this one looks like a lot of fun because it's killer rats. But uh, just to be certain, I am going to put this in the maybe pile just to make sure that, you know, that's not just like a generic uh, statement on the bottom of that DVD and that it is in fact, uh, you know, supposed to be in widescreen. But anyway, next up is Hellraiser. Oh my gosh, you guys. So this one is one that I should have in my collection. I'm totally aware of that. And I do own like all of like from three on because I think that was a different company and so there's like an echo bridge set that has like three on um, but I do not have the first two I've actually had the first two blu-rays in my cart now for a long time on Amazon but I never pulled the trigger uh, and the reason is to be honest, I didn't really like this movie the first time I saw it. I thought this one was quite overrated, to be frank with you. But since then, and you can see it does have the full frame and the widescreen presentation, as it should. Uh, but since I've watched it the first time, I've actually read the novel, the novella, whatever you want to call it, by Clive Barker. And it is beautifully written. It is haunting. The language he uses is just like, I don't know, it's it's beautiful to, to read. And it's such a great short story or, or novella rather. Uh, and so because I've read it, I now want to go back and watch the movie to see kind of how it compares. And so really excited to have this one in the collection now, because that's one that I have been wanting to revisit. So that's definitely one that will stay with me. Um, let me see. I'm, things are getting knocked over here. Okay. This looks really cool. Brandon Lee in a laser mission. This is awesome. Brandon Lee stars as Michael Gold, a mercenary sent to bring leading laser science scientist, Dr. Braun to the U S dead or alive. Okay. Yeah, this looks great. I really hope this is in the original aspect ratio, but nothing on here is really telling me. So I'm going to put this in the maybe pile just to get a better uh, understanding of what the aspect ratio should be. And then I'll decide from there if I want to keep it or not, because stuff like that, like even if it's not the original aspect ratio, sometimes like you just, you're never going to get it on DVD again. And so that might be the only option I have, um, but we'll see. Next up is Quiz Show, a Robert Redford film. This is one that I meant to pick up like multiple times while I was at Disc Replay, but I don't think I actually ever did. And so definitely holding on to this one. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this is um, 
I think it's based on a true story where they uh, basically the person kind of uh, uh, cheats at this quiz game. But maybe I'm maybe I'm just remembering that wrong. Uh, but either way, I do want this one because it looks awesome. A powerful story with unforgettable performances. So maybe it's not based on a true story. Maybe it's just you know it is what it is but yeah this looks really cool yeah uncovers corruption beneath the quiz show's glittering facade the scandal implicates both the wildly popular champion and the disgruntled ex-champ yeah so this looks like a lot of fun definitely holding on to quiz show you know what let me just double check make sure i don't own it first and i do not so i will be holding on to quiz show which is really cool another good ad for the collection all right next up is robert de niro in ronin so this is another one I'd heard quite a lot about over the years, directed by John Frankenheimer, and it looks like it is in widescreen, so I will be holding on to this. Now, is I believe, was this one that, like, maybe it was Movie Guy 365 had on his, like, 4K wish list? Maybe that's why I'd heard of this uh, recently? But either way, this is definitely one I'm going to hold on to. I don't, uh, have never seen that one, so that should be a lot of fun. Let me just grab these two. Enemy at the Gates, which I feel like I own this one already, but I'm going to double check on that one real quick. Um, but then next up is The Ghost and Dominique is dead. <laughs> dead. Oh my goodness. So this is one of those Diamond Entertainment. If you guys remember, there were quite a lot from the last box. Ghostly Horror Double Feature. Eh, man, I don't know. I think I'm just going to put this one. Oh man, but Barbara Steele is in The Ghost. Cliff Robertson and Gene Simmons in Dominique is Dead. 1979 for that one. 1963 for The Ghost. Ah, boy. I don't know. I think... I feel like I'm going to put this one in the trade pile because it's not going to be the original aspect ratio. That, I'm sure. Um, but let's now check and see if I have Enemy at the Gates. I know I always come across this one. Uh, I do not. I have Behind Enemy Lines, but not Enemy at the Gates. So, yeah, very excited for this one. Another uh, Ebert and Roper at the movies. Give it two thumbs up. So another one uh, that have, has their seal of approval on it. But, yeah, this is widescreen, so I will hold on to Enemy at the Gates. That one looks like it should be a pretty good one. All right, let's see what else we have here. Oh, Jet Li in The One. Is this one in the correct? Yes, it is. Awesome. Wide screen and full screen. This film is incredible. The best fight sequences I've seen since Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. One of the very first DVDs I ever had in my collection. So, yeah, I'm holding on to Jet Li's The One. I do not own this, but uh, I watched a martial arts film recently for the first time, um, Police Story. And, oh, my God, it was wonderful. It was so good. And so I've kind of been a little bit more interested in uh, martial arts films, and I think that one should fit the bill. Uh, so next up is Paul Hogan in Crocodile Dundee. Oh, my goodness. Like, why would I not hold on to it? Like, what reason do I have not to? This is probably pretty fun. It's going to be goofy. I'm pretty sure I don't own this one already. I think I have the other guy, whatever, the Crocodile Hunter. Yeah, Crocodile Hunter collision course I have, but I do not have Crocodile Dundee. So I will hold on to that one. And my keep pile is now getting uh, on par with my uh, trade pile. So that's good. Looks like we have two more left on this stack. Mr. Destiny with James Belushi. Somebody just talked about this. I think maybe Miranda picked it up in one of her recent Kino hauls, if I'm not mistaken. A totally magical comedy. So if this one is in widescreen, it is. I really like Jim, uh, James Belushi, Jim Belushi. Uh, Michael Caine is in this as well. I totally recognize her, but I, her name is escaping me. And I cannot remember why I know her, but I absolutely do. But John Lovitz is in this as well, so that's really fun. Yep, I'm going to hold on to Mr. Destiny. That looks like a cute one. And then we have... The last one on this pile. Oh, Castaway. I love this movie, and I actually do not have this in my collection, which is a crying shame because this movie's great. But this is the full screen version, so I will not be holding onto that one, unfortunately. That's a real disappointment because I've been wanting that film. I just haven't picked it up yet. So we have one more stack here to go, making pretty decent time, so that's not bad. Oh, this is like this these cases remind me like of old Sega. What were these? I get maybe old like PlayStation when the uh, original PlayStation first came out. They had the larger cases and they, they kind of remind me of this. But anyway, this is Animal Instincts 2. And I feel like I have... Do I have one just like... Maybe I have this already? I don't know. I'll have to look. But I think this is different. Um, and it is in full screen. So I will check this out to make sure that's the original aspect ratio. I, like I can't even open this thing. There we go. 
this is awesome. Take a look at some of these here, some other films from this company. Oh man, I love it. Very cool. So I'm gonna put that in the maybe pile just to see what's going on with it. But that's really fun. Ooh, another one just like it. Angels, hard as they come. Gary Busey, Scott Glenn. Oh my goodness. Charles Deercop and Gary Littlejohn. If the TV series Touched by an Angel, Angel had been produced in the 1960s or 70s, it probably would have been a biker flick. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is this Sharon Peckinpah is in this? Is this a Sam Peckinpah like feature? Looking for the director, not seeing it. No, Joe Viola. I feel like I just said his name earlier. Anyway, I'm going to put this one in the trade pile. I don't know. It's probably fine, but not not up my not something I really need. And then we have Iron Thunder with Richard Hatch, where men and metal converge. Military weapons controlled by the human mind. This looks fun. Written and directed by Jay Wolfel. I'm going to assume this is widescreen, but I feel like maybe that's normal. I'm putting putting it in, in the maybe pile for now, and uh, we'll see what I can find out about it at the end. Okay, I guess that's the end of those ones. Then we have Gia. Is this... Uh, uh, yes, it is. Uh, and so, oh my gosh, why is why is her name just totally escaping my head? Right, Angelina Jolie. Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, this is one that I've never seen before, but I will absolutely be holding on to this. Um, oh no, it's the wide skirt. It's a uh, full screen 4.3. What a shame. I have always wanted to see this movie and I'm not going to watch it <laughs> in full screen. That's just not going to happen. So, well, that's disappointing. So Gia is uh, still not in my collection, unfortunately. What a shame. What a shame. All right. Next up, another snapper cased, uh, blindside with Rucker Hauer. I don't know anything about this one either. In this bloody action-packed psycho thriller, death is waiting on a dark road. Okay. And it's 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This looks fun. I'm going to hold on to this one. HBO. It's from HBO. So maybe a, an old HBO film. That's really cool. Yeah. Definitely holding on to Blindside with Rutger Hauer. That one looks really cool. This is just like one of the weirder... Another... Another uh, snapper case, Airport 1975. Good, exciting escapism, says Roger Ebert. This is great. I'm holding on to this one. Is this the original? Because I think there are multiple movies in this airport franchise. I don't know if this is the original one or not. Uh, because of that, I'm going to put this in. Oh, you know what? Gloria Swanson playing herself in her final film. Okay. The epic about a mid-air crash and a desperate rescue effort pe features an all-star cast. So I guess this is probably the original. 1970 blockbuster contained twice. Oh no, the original is Airport from 1970. But you know what? Even if I don't have the original, I think I'm going to hold on to this one because this is pretty cool. So yeah, I'll hold on to Airport 1975 and hopefully, I'm sure I can find the original pretty easily, I would imagine. And so it, it might even be in this box. I have no idea. Oh, this is an awesome snapper case. Billy Jack. Just a person who pro uh, protects children and other living things. This is really cool. I believe there was a recent Blu-ray release of this, if I'm not mistaken, by one of the boutique labels. This does have the sticker on it, unfortunately. the Oh, but you know what? I bet that will come off. You can kind of see it on the side there. It still has the uh, residue from the old sticker. But yeah, this is cool. I'm holding on to Billy Jack, one of the cooler looking snapper cases in my collection now. Just a bunch of snapper cases. And this one is the Outlaw Josie Wales. I do have this one in an Eastwood collection already. So I will put that one in the trade pile. And I just thought about it. I did not look. Oh, man. Here it is. Stand this film has been modified from its original version. Ah, oh, disappointing. I'm not going to keep it. There's no point. I'm not going to watch it in uh it's if it's not in its original aspect ratio so i'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that one and billy jack like i said i know is available elsewhere i believe there was just a recent blu-ray release so i will get rid of that one dream catcher though please be in white and it is awesome yes holding on to this one i actually i'm surprised i don't own this one yet but um this is a pretty good movie oh this is cool can actually mail it in for what do you get get your free dvd by mail awesome so yeah holding on to dream catcher 
you know, not the best movie ever, that's for sure, but I do like where it goes, and the cast is great. Donnie Wahlberg, Timothy Oliphant, who I think is fantastic, um, uh, Morgan Freeman is in this, Thomas Jane, Jason, like, just a great cast, so holding on to Dreamcatcher. Let me double check, make sure I don't own it first. Nope, I don't own that one, so we're good there. There are so many snapper, okay, I think there's two more snapper cases. That's unusual, I don't see a ton usually in uh, the movies I've had so far. More seductive than sex, more addictive than any drug, more precious than gold, and one man can get it for you for a price. Power. This sounds awesome. I have heard of this film before. It's Sidney Lumet. That's probably why I've heard of this film before. Uh, but this one is <laughs> standard version. Oh, man. That's disappointing. Okay. I'm sure I can find that one elsewhere in its original aspect ratio, so I will be getting rid of that one. And then the last of the snapper cases here is JFK. I do not have this. I've always wanted to see this. Uh, and so I will be holding on to it. Man, this is actually, oh, very interesting. I've never seen that. Before. What is in here? Is this another disc? You can see there's something in this. Let me try to get this out real quick. So it is an extra disc. And I believe, reading the back here, it looks like a uh, DVD-ROM for your PC. Chat room access, website links. Like, that is awesome. You can see on the back there, all the special features right there. How cool is that? I have never seen a snapper case that opened, like, twofold like that that had an extra disc in it so that is just interesting i love that so yeah i will be holding on to this one just because that's really cool and this is a movie that i've been wanting to own so yeah jfk is going into the collection that's awesome i feel like i've gotten so many snapper cases added in my collection uh today okay the man who shot liberty valence and it is in widescreen this is a western that i have always wanted to see and needed to see and so i'm definitely holding on to this one it ranking with with Stagecoach as one of the best Westerns. So yeah, definitely holding on to Stagecoach. Very excited for that one. Another cool one for the collection. Oh, fantastic. We have more Jean-Claude Van Damme here with Cyborg. So this is really cool. Please be, and it is in widescreen. That's awesome. Now, this is one I potentially already have on another collection. Let me, nope, I do not. So holding on to Cyborg. And my piles are getting even back out again after some trade pile stuff there. And then we have another one from Front Row Features. This one is One Way Out. Kidnapping, seduction, robbery. Want to go for a ride? Oh my goodness. This is another one that does not list if it's widescreen or full screen at all. Ah, oh man. I don't know about this one. One Way Out. Have you guys heard of this one? I feel like something about it is familiar, but I don't know what. You can see the back here, like the quality just looks terrible, but that's all right. It's from 2001. It is what it is. And you know what? I'm going to put that one in the trade pile and uh, we'll just go from there. Next up is Charlie's Angels. I actually really enjoyed this movie, but I do own that one on 4K. Yes, I think the second one is not available on 4K, but the first one is and the, the remake as well. Oh, and then we have Howard Stern's Private Parts. They actually just, I was just looking at this one the other day at Disc Replay and uh, I ended up putting it down, but I will hold on to this. It is in widescreen. Never seen this before. I will have to replace the case. As you can see, it's broken, so I'll swap it with one of these trade ones. Um, but, you know, I used to listen to Howard Stern. Or I used to watch his show when I was in high school just because it, you know, was taboo and so i used to listen to it then i don't really like the guy now but is what it is um and then we have rutger hauer again in hemoglobin okay this is awesome does not say if it's widescreen or full screen but i'm gonna guess like <laughs> this one's probably a 1.33 to 1 aspect ratio anyway so i'm gonna put this one in the maybe pile and see what i can find out about it but hemoglobin hemo hemoglobin hemoglobin did i say that already i don't know hemoglobin yeah i guess i was just saying it one way or the other all right moving along here uh next up is river dance that i honestly have zero interest in the live from radio city music hall in new york city river dance trading that one away i absolutely love this movie one of the most underrated films i've ever known uh, great movie, but I do own this one on Blu-ray and this is the full screen version anyway, so I will trade that one away. We have two left. First up is Pretty Woman. Great movie. I do not own this one, so I will be holding onto this, assuming that it is, yes, original aspect ratio, approximately 1.85 to 1. So awesome. 
I really like this movie. It's, it's cute. You know, it's a rom-com, but it's a uh, rom-com done well. I remember my parents watching this when I was younger and uh, I never really watched the whole thing with them, but I have seen it since then. And I just, it's a good movie. So I'm going to hold on to Pretty Woman, put that in that pile. And then let me make sure. Yep. Last but not least, one stuck to the box here. This is, oh, it's got like stickiness on the bottom. Oh, it's from the sticker. Uh, this is The Lover. So this is one of the decade's best films, according to James Grant, for seen at the movies. But it is in widescreen. Film is based on the autobiographical novel by French author uh, Marguerite Duras, whose youthful real-life romance with a Chinese man in colonial, colonial Vietnam caused a scandal. Yeah... Not really my type of film. I am going to go ahead and trade that one away. So that is everything out of this big old box here, as you guys can see. So let me go through the maybes and see what I'm going to keep and what's going to go into the trade pile. Okay, so some interesting results here, I guess. Uh, the first one I'm going to end up bindering is The Phantom of the Opera. I don't own it in any format, and it's going to be in the original aspect ratio, so I will hold on to that. I am going to have to get rid of Vision, or Laser Mission, rather, and Killer Rats, both not in the original aspect ratio. And then, unfortunately, like, I really wanted this one, but Laser, our Safe House, is unfortunately not in the original aspect ratio either. So I will hold on, or uh, end up getting, giving that one away. And then Agency, I just don't need this one. I'm putting that one in the trade pile. So... The one that I'm going against my best uh, judgment on is hemoglobin, hemoglobin, however you say that. Um, this one is not the correct aspect ratio. According to my app, um, it is in full screen, but there's no other DVD release that I can find of this. And so I'm just going to hold on to this one because I don't think I'll be able to access it in any other fashion. So I will hold on to that one again against my better judgment but it is what it is visions of passion i will hold on to because that is in the correct aspect ratio the dying gall has pretty decent reviews it's like 6.5 ish on imdb i'll hold on to that one augustus is full screen but that is the original aspect ratio so i'll keep that one and then animal instincts 2 the same can be said for that along with iron thunder which just looks ridiculous so i will hold on to those two as well so that's everything that i'm keeping bindering and then the ones that i'm gonna uh, trade off all right guys so that was box number eight arguably the strangest mix of movies that i've seen so far in one of these boxes but i had a blast going through this and i hope you guys enjoyed it as well so i'm not gonna like show my keep pile again because it's almost falling over over here already anyway so i'm just gonna leave it there until i'm done filming but i'm keeping a bunch and you guys should be seeing right now how many i'm keeping how many are going into a binder which i believe it was just the one um at least as of the time of the filming and then how many i'm doing donating or uh, trading. And so, yeah, there should be pretty even numbers between keep and sell, but there were quite a few that I'm getting rid of this time around, which is totally fine. But I would love to hear from you guys down below. If there's anything here that I'm getting rid of that you think, man, you would really like that movie, hold on to it. Please let me know down in the comments below and so I can save it uh, for before I end up getting rid of it. I really appreciate all your guys' comments. So thank you for those. But as always, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like down below. That really does help me out. And like I always say, I don't just talk movies, I talk all things media, be it books, movies, video games, graphic novels, manga. If it's media related, I'm interested in it. And if you are too, you might consider subscribing. All right, guys, that is going to do it for today. I just want to say thank you all so much for watching. And I want to encourage you to consume some media today. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>